This is what it's been like for a year and I'm super glad that we skipped the crib. Also save some money. Hello, if you're budget conscious, skip the crib, get a bed. You're good for the next few years. Hi guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I talk about motherhood. I talk about pregnancy. We do things a little granola, a little naturally. We do cloth diapering, elimination communication, which is like a potty training for your infant. This floor beds, we do Montessori stuff, all that. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, if you're that kind of ma, please subscribe. We just hit my goal of 100,000 subscribers. I actually can't believe it. They send you like a play button or something. I don't know, I'm pretty jazzed about it. So we're making a new goal to get a thousand likes on this video. So if you like the video, please like the video. Today we're gonna talk about floor bed after a year because our daughter is now 13 months old. We've been doing flo a floor bed since she was born, really. We had a crib for a little bit. I just, I don't know how to put her down in the crib. I don't really know. Honestly, I had no idea what the heck I was doing when she was first born. Like she would just fall asleep in the living room and I'd be like, cool, she's sleeping. And then she'd wake up and I'd be like, okay, now she's awake. I never put her down for a nap until four months. That's when I started thinking, or when I started kind of being told like, oh, you should maybe put her on a schedule. Okay. So I started to put her on a schedule and like learn what wake windows were and learn what sleepy cues were. So baby number two will do things a little bit differently. I tried putting her in her crib a couple of times and her legs would just get stuck in the sides. She's pretty, I, it just was no good. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I could just put a bed on the floor. Then I could side nurse her to sleep and she could fall asleep because we nurse to sleep, which is a big no-no in like the, I don't know sleep training community it worked really well for us so we stuck with it and I'm of the mindset of like do what works for your family if sleep training works for you and you don't nurse to sleep great if you nurse to sleep every time for 13 months great whatever works for you is what you should do I support you mom whatever you're doing I'll tell you a little bit about our experience we put the bed on the floor and then I learned that that's a thing it's called a Montessori floor bed it's supposed to help them with independence. You can put a mirror so they can see themselves. When they're little, it doesn't matter. You just lay them on there. They can't even roll over. When they start to get a little mobile, it gets a little more complicated. I did a room tour of this. I can't believe I did the room tour because the room looks like, I don't know, not Pinterest or Instagrammable. There's an account that I follow, uh, a YouTube account, Happa Family. She does all things Montessori, but she's got like four videos on floor beds. So I watched those to see how to do it safely. I really, really love it. We also do uh, co-sleeping and bed sharing. I've got a video on that. All of these things that I'm going to talk about are in a blog post. So if you're like, where can I find that video? Where can I find that camera she's talking about? Where can I find it? It'll be the first comment in, in the comments or in the description. Just look for my blog and then you'll find all the things. So I will always put her to sleep in her room for her naps and to go to sleep. Then at some point in the night when she wakes up, I'll just bring her into our bed. We stopped nursing probably a month ago and at night. Seth the other day was like, I think that we should get a crib for the second baby just so that we can like put them in there and they are content. But the floor bed, the whole point is that the whole room is childproof. So if they wake up and they're content, they can just crawl around their room and play. So you don't have to worry that anything's gonna happen to them so they can go and explore their room and get some independence like that. I was told that your baby's room should be pitch black. Like put your hand in front of your face. If you can see it, it's not dark enough. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish that she had learned how to fall asleep with a little bit of light in the room. It's hard to keep it pitch black and like have it so that, because right now her room's pitch black all the time. So even during the day, it's like dark and gloomy. I want to be able to like open the shades and then close the shades. Also, it's really hard for her to fall asleep anywhere else if it's not pitch black. So I don't love that. Next baby will kind of teach them how to fall asleep during the day. And I thought babies don't do that. Then I asked on my Instagram where I am like all the time. It was 50, 50. Half the people were like, no, my baby falls asleep in the daytime or in the light. What? So Seth and I were talking about it. Now that we know what sleepy cues and like wake windows are, we can put the second babe sometime, I'm not pregnant yet. We can put the second babe down when they're showing sleepy cues in their room so that they learn to put themselves to sleep and I don't have to nurse all the time. I loved nursing all the time, but it also put me on a three hour leash where I could not leave the house. You need a mattress. You could do twin or full. If you just wanna go for the full and then that can be their bed for a really long time. Great. We got a mattress topper. It's like three inches thick. Uh, it's a little bit squishy, which is something that they say not to do. To have a really hard bed is best. Aaliyah had really good neck control since she's been born. So I trusted that if she were to ever go face down, that she would just pick up her head. Plus we watch her on the monitor like crazy or she's sleeping in our bed. But you decide that for your family. To make it look a little cuter than just having a mattress on the floor or 
Happy Family said that if you live in like a warm climate, you want the mattress off the floor. They make these super cute Montessori beds where it's like little A-frame bed thing for the floor. We'll probably eventually get her one of those because they are really cute and they just make the room look not like a mattress on the floor. And then there's Ikea shelves, like, you know, just the cubes. Those are perfect because they can't tip over. They're just low profile. You can put stuff in there that they can access and play with. The camera, if you get a camera, you want one that can turn. So if they're moving around the room, you can find them in the room. Ours, it has the ability to have two cameras on one monitor. So eventually, babe number two, you can have one camera on Aaliyah, one camera on babe two, and then go back and forth with this monitor. One thing that happens a lot when they're little and they're rolling is they roll over and hit their head on the wall. So I have these mattress pads that I had from camping that I would just put on the wall. So if she went to roll and hit the wall, she was just hitting the mattress pad. And for a while I had a mirror up for her so that she could see herself. Uh, they say an acrylic mirror is the best. They're a little more expensive, but they don't shatter. Babies have a lot of liquids. There can be blowouts. There can be peeing through their diaper. There can be spitting up. There can be mom leakage. You wanna make sure that you have a uh, mattress protector because I'm using this mattress topper and it's only two inches thick. It's been super hard to find something that like wraps around it. So I've been looking at just like a wool pad. We'll, doesn't have flame retardants, doesn't have, it's all non-toxic. It's also very expensive, but it just goes underneath their, their sheets. So some people are like, okay, cool. You put your kid in their room. What about when they learn to open the door? You're going to lock your kid inside the door. Some parents do that. And if that's what you do, cool. I heard put a gate outside of the door and I like that so they can open the door, but then there's a gate and then they just yell for you and you go get them. So that's what we'll do when she starts sleeping in her floor bed on her own and she stops coming and, and bed sharing with us. Another question is, what are you supposed to do when you travel? Do you use a pack and play when you travel? We don't. So what I did was I just laid a blanket on the floor and she slept on that until it was time for me to go to bed and then she slept with me. But if otherwise you can just, oh, I see, cause they could crawl around. If your baby's not sleeping with you, a pack and play could work, but I am obsessed with the California Beach Go. They weigh way less than a pack and play. They're way smaller than a pack and play when they're not assembled. The assembly is like this, boop, boop. It takes two seconds to put it up and down. It's the greatest thing for traveling. It's not, the top isn't open like a uh, pack and play is, so you have to, it might be a little bit tougher to put them in there, but I'd say it's way worth it for the ease of traveling with it and how big it is and how easy it is to set up and down. In this house, the master is upstairs and her room is on the main level. No. So we're gonna have her upstairs with us. We actually just made this area, which was a closet. It'll just be her little nook. Essentially her floor bed's on the floor. We're gonna put a gate out there so that if she wants, she could crawl to our bed and hop in with us if she wants to, but that she can't get down the stairs. But I just think the floor bed is such a great thing. And then they're done because a lot of people are transitioning now. Their babies from cribs to a bed. There's no transition. They've always just been in a bed. Their room is baby proof and they get the independence of being able to like go around their room and go wherever they want. Even when she was little and I would just put her to sleep in our bed, I would do all of the sleepy things where she would take a nap and then move her to our bed. The only regret that I have is that I had too dark of blinds like blackout curtains. Hope this was helpful. I'm no expert by any means. Go check out Hapa Family. They have all the logistical stuff, but this is what it's been like for a year and I'm super glad that we skipped the crib. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.